c'est flou. Hein. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks now. Thank you. Freedom to the people that live here is what they're mostly concerned about. And if they think someone is threatening them, then they react very fiercely, I believe. Especially because they they're, they have a huge ego as a country. They believe they have their advancing technology and stuff like that. So they will lash out if they feel that that's being challenged. Which you got to understand, that's, they're just in a dominant position. So they feel that it's just how a dominant person will attack instead of, you know, playing, playing it defensive. I'm just a kid out here, and they got, they got a lot of kids out here who are trying to trace, chase their dreams. It's the city of dreams. It's the place where you want to go if you want to pursue something. I would recommend every young person who lives in America to come and live in New York for a couple of years. They will show you what life is really about here. You know what I'm saying? They'll get your swag up. They'll get you some money in your pocket. They'll get you working. It'll change your whole mentality, and it's not slow. It's really fast here. You know what I'm saying? So if you can, Jay-Z said, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. And from personal experience, I believe I've been given what's, what's necessary to, to conquer any other place in America. Louis, you need training for me. Only I'm the legendary cornbread. You know. need training for me. Because if you lose the time, you lose the game. So are you ready to play? Well, let the games begin. <laughs> what? I'm intimidating you. This is what I do. <laughs> this is how I intimidate. A greedy guy, isn't he? Yeah. He wants everything. Well, Lou, since you want everything, everything you shall have. <laughs> you protecting the king, right? So continue to protect your king. I like your pieces. Your pieces is fine. This guy came all the way to France to try to beat me. Do you believe that? Who comes from France to try to beat me? No one but him. Once again, another one? Uh, no. <laughs> Only one? I just need to train one more year, one more year, and then I come back. You need more than one more year. <laughs> you ready? Ten more years. Ten, no, for me, for me, it's a lifetime. Because I'm the legendary cornbread. architecte urbaniste et je travaille depuis sept mois maintenant à New York. Il euh, licencie facilement mais il embauche facilement donc euh, il te donne facilement ta chance et c'était mon cas, je parlais quand même très très mal anglais et puis euh, ils m'ont dit ben, on essaye on verra et puis voilà ça fait sept mois que ça dure. Et ça semble beaucoup plus communautaire je trouve par rapport à chez nous effectivement il y a Chinatown que tout le monde connaît 
il y a Harlem, il y a vraiment des quartiers, euh, comme on dit, des quartiers black. Donc ça semble beaucoup moins mixé, mais en même temps, j'ai l'impression que, notamment professionnellement, euh, tout le monde a beaucoup plus sa chance. Hein. Je vois par exemple là, dans l'agence d'architecture où je suis, c'est beaucoup beaucoup plus mixte euh, qu'en France, par exemple. <musique> I think people think that New Yorkers are stuck up and think that New York is the center of the world. And I think, uh, I mean, like, it f feels like it's the center of the yeah. world a lot of times because there's so many folks from everywhere here. I mean, it's an amazing place. I think people that are from here, they're very, I want to say like we're friendly, but we very much keep to ourselves a lot. So I think like on subways, like I have individual. Yeah, it's like you go on the subway, you don't talk to anybody. <laughs> French people, they don't like American, actually. Uh, <laughs> you you think so? Uh, no, no, we, <laughs> yeah. like, we like American. But, yeah. Oh no, they, they don't. Philadelphia, les amis. Philadelphia, ville historique, cité de l'indépendance américaine, cité de la constitution américaine, cité de Rocky Balboa. Anybody in Philly that is an Eagles fan, they will stand up, they will fight, they will do whatever. Until the death. Absolutely. So people in the States, they know about Philly and their fans. If you're not from Philly and like you're coming out and you're wearing like a Giants jersey, you forget about it. Really? Well, you know. Hey, what's going on? Go D, go D tours. Philadelphia is different because there's very little to no pretension. Um, in Philadelphia, people will let you be. If you want to be weird, if you want to be nasty, if you want to be mean, you can be that way. And everybody accepts it. Um, I was in D.C. before, very white collar, beautiful city, but everybody there is striving to be successful. And when I lived in New York, Everybody wants to be interesting. Here, everybody just wants to be. They just want to live. They want to live and 
they're the realest people that I've met in a major city. You know, if, if they don't like you, they'll tell you, you know, fuck off. If they do like you, they'll buy you a beer. Like, that's it. Safety. So sit back, relax, and enjoy your trip. We want fair election in Cambodia. 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 Cher. Euh, la ville est propre mais elle est complètement impersonnelle, tous les bâtiments sont les mêmes, t'as l'impression que tous les gens qui sont ici travaillent pour le gouvernement. Euh... C'est vrai, c'est vrai. Non, ça par contre c'est vrai. Tu as le gouvernement, tu as beaucoup de compagnies, tu es sur la côte, donc c'est très c'est c'est or work right out right outside the city. So there are a lot of places at night to go and have a good time. It's not quite as, as serious as you know you might think it is. Gros Burger King Victor décide de faire des pompes histoire de calmer sa conscience. Allez on bloque on du mal à remonter. Remonte à moitié, remonte à moitié, remonte, remonte, remonte Oh, it's just like the injustices with the Native American peoples and I myself being half Native American, but just being human being, the main part, uh, reservations are basically prisoner of war camps. You know, the, the injustice is what are still happening as far as the checkerboard system. You're off your land on the reservation for 30 days, this government comes in and reclaims it. My tribe, it's taking America to court for land, what they had promised and gave us in Illinois, but then took it away from us and sent us to Lawrence, Kansas and to Miami, Oklahoma. And there's, it's really two cities. There's Washington, you know, that you hear about on the news, mm -hmm. uh, the political capital. Then there's D.C. And that's yeah. different, man. Nothing's allowed to be taller than the capital, which Correct. is 12 yeah. stories high. So nothing can be over 12 stories. Okay. Mm. Since you can't build up, and it's a small city, I mean, the population never changes. When I moved there in 1968, it was 600,000 people. It's still 600,000. Mm. Cleveland. Seven and a half matin. After the arrival of the bus, and two hours and a half of sleep, Nous arrivons à Cleveland, la ville du rêve et, et tout ça. Ohio is interesting because um, it's kind of the gateway between two regions of the United States. Actually, Cleveland is. Um, there's a river that runs through the center of Cleveland, and the east side of that river is considered the e starting the east coast of the United States. And the west side of the river, which we're on right now, is the start of the Midwest region. So I mean, it's, it's actually a really interesting city to be in because there's, you know, each region has its very own specific kind of styles and this is it's kind of a mix of both here you know east coast you've been to new york and philadelphia as you know it's very fast-paced a lot of uh you know it, i don't want to make generalizations here but they can be a lot less nice than the east coast in the midwest we are extremely friendly yeah. in fact new york people probably hate us because we you yeah. know we like to say hi in fact my niece worked in new york 
and she was told, um, she was a waitress, and she said she was told that she was too friendly. People don't like that. You're putting them off. So, well, I'm glad he came to Cleveland. Not many people do when yeah. they're hitting the United States. Yeah, so. When the industry started to go away, the population started to shrink up a bit. But right now, the downtown area of Cleveland, the main part of the city, is kind of making a resurgence. Now if I want a honky tonk around the two or three, bro, let the headache don't you worry about me. Just mind your own business. Mind your own business. If you mind your business, then you can't be a mind in my hand. I play guitar, I play bass guitar, I play banjo, I play drums. Uh, you know, I don't have a whole lot of superpowers, it's just uh, I'm overwhelmingly good looking. Clearly that's the case with flowing golden locks. <laughs> and uh, I can play guitar, that's about it. There's one thing that I can guarantee. Probably won't name no buildings after me. So the people that came here mm. in the beginning, they were pioneers, they weren't afraid of anything, they were very individualist, right? And they, yeah. they, they went into this unknown land and it was very dangerous and, and that's the spirit of the people here and that's just the way they are. My boys were taking karate lessons, for example, and they used to have a, a, a cookout once a year where they would get a, a pig a whole pig and they would roast the pig. Mm. So one year we went to the cookout and it, there was this pig and they're roasting it and it, it ended up being really bad weather. It was very windy and it was an outdoor thing. It was a, a gazebo so it's open and it's outside and it was cold and it was windy and it was raining. And I can tell you for Indian families, if we were in that situation, we would said, okay, let's just go home and make tea at somebody's house. But these guys, they had in their trucks and things, they had tarp and they had tools and they practically built a house around this, you know, they made an enclosed structure and they still had their, their, their cookout. So yeah. it's just a different spirit. He does tattoos. tattoos on himself. Yeah? You self? Yeah. Wow. Stick and poke. The needle. Oh, okay. So this flag is a flag of... Uh, America. But uh, before... Yeah, the old one. So this city used to have the most concentrated uh, amount of public housing in the, in the country. And it was recently like almost all but torn down. A lot of like the gang activity and the violence that was concentrated in these areas has been dispersed throughout the city, but the drug trade and the commerce has been destroyed because they don't have like a central hub from which to conduct business. Gangs had a vested interest in keeping violence under control because it would interrupt their business if there was too much violence. So now that their bi business doesn't have a like a centralized location, they don't have as much interest in keeping the violence at bay and young people are just like more restless. close to burning these potatoes. I didn't realize that oven was that hot. Oh, okay. No, but they look good. My in France, we have fromage, but if you buy fromage, you can use it for an hour to get rid of the fromage. It's a
the most important thing about Chicago all around the world before I come to Chicago what blues. people were talking about uh, in Turkey about Chicago was like the Chicago blues you know that's that's the biggest contribution of Chicago to the world. you know Chicago is divided into two cities uh, South Chicago and North Chicago it's divided because they made it divided you know they pushed all the people who are not rich to concentrate in a certain part of the city and at the end you have this like huge crimes going on America is more like free markets if you can make profits by pushing yeah. people out do it mm. this okay. is America you know and that's uh, what yeah. they did Le Mississippi, c'est quand même tout un truc, hein. If you go downtown, there's a place close to downtown called Crown Candy Kitchen. And they've got a bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. It's like a pound of bacon. Yeah. <laughs> and they throw, they throw a slice of tomato and a leaf of lettuce in there, and it's a technical bead bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. It's really good. Not healthy, but really good. St. Louis City is a small place. It's only 63 square miles. Its borders were frozen a hundred years ago. So we're right on the border with St. Louis County, which isn't counted in the crime statistics. If you take St. Louis City and St. Louis County together, St. Louis is a safe city. We're ranked like 144 out of all the cities, mm -hmm. all the big cities. But St. Louis by itself, which is what they usually count, the little small patch mm -hmm. that was frozen in 1873 or 4, they count that, and that brings us up to the top five every time. tell you some things about Memphis, man. Downtown Memphis is a real safe place, but it's known for the blues. Yeah. I don't have anything against this city. They don't do nothing for the homeless guys with too much, especially the homeless veterans. I'm a Vietnam veteran, ex-veteran. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, I don't want to live nowhere else but here now, because you got Beer Street, you got the blues, you got barbecue. People come from all over the world just to see Memphis. Alors aujourd'hui, comme c'est mon anniversaire, euh, on a prévu un repas un peu spécial. C'est-à-dire que on va manger, bon ça c'est la gamelle de Louis, on va manger des... Euh, alors lui il a choisi du bœuf au aux, aux légumes. Donc voilà, c'est en sauce, vous pouvez voir un petit peu comment c'est à l'intérieur. Ouais, c'est l'aventure. Hein. Mmh. Ils 
someone can't claim they say I don't have a written agreement, so it doesn't count. They say no, no, no. Did you did you agree and shake hands on it? In Louisiana, if you shake hands, it's it's as good as a, a written contract. No other state has that rule. It's so cool, man. Yeah, cool. It's so cool. <laughs> What, what happened? No, I was in the army. Yeah. And uh, I was, it was my time to leave. Okay. I, I, I served, served all my time. Okay, okay. Mm. And uh, three days before I left, I, I got drunk and threw a dart at the map. It came up New Orleans. Marines originally were uh, the army of the ships, and they're an elite fighting force. Send in the Marines. You know, they say, the Marines take the place, the Army holds it. And sometimes it gets mixed up. Yeah. When Vietnam, it was mixed up. Yeah. Uh -huh. No war is like the movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people believe uh, that in America about the Ben Laden, the co the, com the conspiracy. Um. Um, oh, lots of have, lots of Americans. We yeah. have many. We have many conspiracy stories, uh -huh. and we have many explanations. Yeah, and, uh, but we we will never know after after all. I don't know. I don't know. Nobody knows. The, I mean, uh, they they know, but the World Trade Center, two airplanes, three yeah. buildings go down. Yeah, like this. Uh, Boom, 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 perfectly down. Okay, no, the fuel I, I of the plane will the burn the, the steel. It wasn't just the fuel, the weight, and then, and then the collapse. The oh, fell on the other. The fucking plane went in and out. Lloyd. The building is in here to go this Lloyd. way. Not hey, this way. Lloyd, you have the right to believe whatever you want to believe. And I have the right to believe whatever I want. Science. Anyway, we will know that in 50 years, I guess. It's not possible. C'est impossible. C'est impossible. On ne saura jamais. Jamais, dans le monde entier. Mais c'est ça. Je suis pas là pour Je suis là pour boire Quoi? Ah oui. New York. Oh, okay. That's why I'm so mean. <laughs> Everybody in New York wants to be number one. Yeah. And they, only they want to be interesting. And only one person can be number one. So that means everybody else is unhappy because they're it's not a number big one. Competition, yeah. Right. So they're not happy because they're not number one. And number one guy, he's not happy either. Sorry. Yeah, I saw w Richie Havens, man. You know Richie Havens? Richie Havens. Freedom, freedom. Sometimes I feel like a wilderness child. Sometimes I feel like I'm almost gone. You know, you know that song? No. We had all these beatniks. We were called beatniks then. They understand the music. They understand freedom. They understand happiness. They understand life. They don't understand a stupid job where you work all day long and then one day you're dead and you go, wow, I wish I hadn't have fucking done that. You know, oops, <laughs> there goes my life. Post gone, you know? It's, it's everything talk? except Bourbon Street is where to go. Any place except Bourbon Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have been, uh, Bourbon yeah. Street's just tourists. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. People yeah. throwing up, drinking, getting drunk, and they don't they don't know they're drinking too much. Yeah. They think they're having a good time, but they're really just being idiots, you know? But, you know, you're, you guys are smart, you know?
is a documentary. A documentary on what? Urban Street Hoodlums. What's your name? Vito. Vito, I'm with my dog Vito, man. We out here in New Orleans, goddamn me. Doing it big. I'm from Houston, Texas, but I'm out here in New Orleans. Doing it big, man. You know how we do it, man. Getting messed up. Fresh to death. Common Rand, though. I'm in the building all day. is not an aggressive animal. They will almost never come after a human. A crocodile is a very aggressive animal. They will stalk a human. Texas. We got in Texas. We got in Texas. Texas. We got in Texas. Oh, although you can. Gonna be warm there. What? Gonna be warm there. Warm? Warm well, well, there, you know, with the whole uh, thing. In the car? Yeah. You need money I, to... I, I ain't worth three men. Yeah, but you, you need to... You need money to, to drive? Oh, yeah, I ain't worth three men. Huh? If I drive, I get there. <laughs> That's how it was in Texas. We landed on the moon six times and we were doing moonwalks long before Michael Jackson. So the first one occurred on July 20th, 1969, when the words came from the moon into this room and they said, Houston, Tranquility Base here, the Eagle has landed. Tranquility Base was the landing site, the Eagle was the name of the lunar lander, and Houston was the first word ever spoken on the moon. And then, the last word spoken on the moon was on Apollo 17. And the words came from the moon into this room, and they said, We are on our way, Houston. Houston was the last word ever spoken on the moon. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Houston. This is the home of Mission Control, home of the astronauts, and this is where the astronauts call when they want to get in contact with them. We can also go to the art park guy too, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, Scrap Daddy? The guy who does the art park? You know, he like builds like the praying mantis bar and all that shit. Yeah, men we should know, but don't. Yeah. Thank you. She builds it by holding air. Office shepherd. Like the Truman? Are you gonna identify? Ah, yeah, where are we? Where are we? I literally have no fucking idea where we are. In some really bizarre, like, I guess you could call it a tribute to the American presidency, but at the same time it's a bit weird. There's just loads of heads in like a parking lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. This is because everybody goes crazy over, you know, yeah. conspiracy theories and everything. Do you remember how to do this? Does anybody remember how to do this? I don't know how to do it. I don't know what Let's happened. Look, this is awesome. It looks like two towers with smoke. Something like that. Come on. Oh. Like 9-11 conspiracy theory or something. Okay. Yeah, or if you have a dollar bill, you can make George Washington smile. <laughs> I think most of us just have like a general American accent yeah, yeah. with some Texan qualities to it. But when we travel, we all turn up our Oh yeah. Mm. Like when I go somewhere else, I'm like, yeah, I'm from Texas, y'all. I'm from Texas, hey <laughs> y'all. Yeah. But I think in the major cities, it's a lot different than it would be when you're in a small town. Yeah. And I mean, we have a, our mayor is a Democrat and she's a lesbian, so. Yeah. <laughs> Texas is, you know, this place where you can go and just kind of like, make yourself your own person. You but know? it always has been, right? Six mm -hmm. Flags over Texas. Six. We've been a part of, you know, six different countries, one of which was when we decided to be our own country, mm -hmm. you know? We'll say it in your sexy baritone voice, say it into the camera. Houston, we have a problem. Oh. <laughs> oh. We, we send it to friends to <laughs> 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 To sell it to people. 
So, cheers again to happiness. Communism says we're all the same. In North Korea, they say we're all the same except for us. That's not communism. You know? I mean, look, communism is a great theory, but it's been proven that it doesn't work. Democracy, they say that it works. I don't think it works. We have two parties, right? Like two hands. And they're almost exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. They say that they're different, but in the end, they're the same. You know the history of Texas, right? Texas was Mexico. part of Mexico, right? And then Mexico said, well, we need more people to fill up the, the state. So they said, well, we'll welcome settlers to come from the United States and from other parts of the world to come into Texas the territory of Texas, right, to fill it with people and to build cities and everything else, and you won't pay tax. Mm -hmm. But then the government in Mexico said, well, we want you to pay tax. And the people in Texas said, fuck that, we're not paying taxes, fuck you, we're leaving. And then the United States gave those people money to rebel against Mexico. Mexico, legally, everything from Texas to California should be Mexico. Mexico said, okay, fine, fuck it. You know, Texas can be an independent country. Texas was its own independent country. And then we said, oh, the Mexican government is attacking the United States, which the Mexican government was like, no, we're not. We already sent ships, invaded Mexico from Veracruz into Mexico City. Like, we, we already, the ships were on their way and we're like, hey, they attacked us. But they, they didn't really attack us. We just made it up. And then we invaded, and then we, we took them over. Okay. Because Texas went into rebellion against Mexico, mm -hmm. all of the West is available. So Texas feels like, well, we, we delivered the West to the United States. Yeah. So historically, we did something where other states can't really say that. Oklahoma can't say, oh, Oklahoma, we did, no. Texas, il n'y a pas vraiment de désert, il y a juste la partie extrême ouest qui est, qui est aride, mais la, plus, la largement plus grande partie du Texas, ça ressemble à ça, quoi. très verdoyant, euh, avec des collines, des prairies, et euh, les cowboys, c'était juste des types qui, allaient, euh, qui emmenaient euh, un peu comme les bergers, quoi. un peu comme, des, un, des un peu comme un berger, sauf que c'est avec des vaches. Mais là, tu dormais sur un banc, là. stuff and two weeks later they it dies and I replant stuff and it dies. Yeah, I just totally you, suck it. You could on the weather? I think I'm watering too much. Um, 
and I'm a general illustrator. I, I, I would like to be an artist. I don't have time to be an artist. Uh, for me, I think the, the difference between the two, art is that, I was, thinking, I was telling you about this yesterday, anytime you bend to accommodate anybody or any political ideal or any color that you don't want to do, but you're doing because they're, it happens to be popular or it might fit in somebody's living room, it ceases to become art. It is illustration. It, it, it's, it's an art form and then there's some creativity to it, but it's not pure, it's not, for me, it's not beautiful if it's not, uh, or it's not art, yeah. if it's not, uh, if it doesn't come solely from the heart. Okay, so, what's up, so, uh, I live in Austin, I live in Austin, not Austin. <laughs> <laughs> People in Austin think it's expensive, just compare it to Texas, but they don't know anything about the East Coast or the West Coast, uh, just, some of these, the, the major cities, at least the cool cities in the East Coast, are almost impossible to live in. Well, the, the, the problem with Texas is they think that Texas is the, is the way America should be. Uh, it just, I mean, they're, they're not so horrible. They're just very conservative and very Christian values and very ignorant. And most of them will never leave Texas. And they just, this is their life. It's, it's very simple. And that's what they do. You know, they just make the trips to the Walmart and, and you know, barbecue every weekend and, you know, try to buy the newest, biggest thing, and that's about it. I'm not unpatriotic, and I'm not um, against the U.S. I think it's it's a it's a wonderful country, but with any country, there's you know there's issues and there's things wrong with it, and things that can be fixed. <laughs> culture you have. You have the smart people and you've got the dumb people and the mean people. You know, the smart people are going to try to do what's best for the culture and the mean people are just going to fuck everything up. A lot, I just got back from a gun shoot where people had like machine guns that had a belt that cost 250 bucks to shoot a belt of bullets. And it was a barrage that could scare the shit out of anybody, you know. It was like something that could clear a tree line. You know, just like ridiculous people have that shit I have my little 22 pistol just in case a raccoon gets on the front porch and I can't get him off and he's eating my cats that's the only reason why you need a gun in my neighborhood it's badass let's get some more beer Real barbecue, it is something that is prepared for hours and it's cooked under low heat with you know smoke and, and wood fires. Many people refer to grilling, which is what we're doing, as barbecuing, but that's that's not. It's it's grilling. We're cooking on a on a grill. We're not out here all day long cooking it. I'm from Stephenville, Texas, which is just about four hours straight up 281. Yeah. It's a small town with funny accents. We dip thong everything. It's like, I'm so tired, I can, I can barely move. And uh, some of my family members, you couldn't even understand a thing coming out of their mouth. 
I don't think I've ever encountered anybody that didn't like Texans, even when they didn't like George Bush. The yeah. first thing out of their mouth was, uh, what about your man Bush? He's not my man. Mm. And they got that, and then we moved on, and Texas is okay anywhere. If there was a law saying uh, you can't carry a gun anymore, would you be comfortable with that? No or? problem with that. No problem. Okay, my family, on the other hand, will... Yeah. It makes a lot of people who do carry guns and are law-abiding citizens and they're, you know, they, they just do, you know, it, it criminalizes them for something that they've done their whole life. Because, you know, we, we live in, in a city, but if you live out in Terlingua or in a, in a ranch town and all that, they have, a, they have a use for it. They have a reason. It's to eat. It's to, to protect your, your property from animals, other animals. And or if you're out in the middle of nowhere, yes, for self-defense, you know. And those people, they have. I think they should have the right to do that. Non, mais 320 balles, c'est un coup quand même. Ça fait pas mal. Ouais, c'est ça. Là, on a changé PS. Là, il nous dit tourner à droite dans 320 balles. It's a nice motorcycle, and you uh, you are allowed to drive that? No, go, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I read this article recently about how this guy went around America, like somebody paid him some magazine or something to travel for a year around America, and he said he t he went with the full intent of like finding out that everybody in America sucks. Like he already knew this. He knew America sucks and everybody mean and like selfish and they suck. And he went out and he found like the total opposite. He found like everybody was really nice and like giving. I think that's true, man. I think like even in America, we have this idea that like the people outside your door are like malicious and they will hurt you and rob you and kill you and shit. I mean, that's what's so refreshing about like traveling and going to hostels and really experiencing it firsthand. Those places like Houston, it, it, they are they grow up with like a very strong 
sense of identity. Like, we're Texans. Mm. You know, like, that's a very powerful identity. And, like, New York's the same thing. Like, we're New Yorkers. You know, I'm from Brooklyn. Mm. But, like, from Ohio, I never identified with that. You know, like, I kind of hated it until I went to New York. Then I kind of got a perspective on, like, oh, this is what people from the Midwest are like. Mm. You know, like, we have these characteristics. Like, we people in the Midwest we think we're just like the most normal people in the world the most average people but like you realize like working with like indian people or people from pakistan or africa or whatever you're like we are just as weird as they are you know what i mean and you don't realize that until you're taken out of your culture the americans don't they don't make it a priority to travel you know i mean some people do but you're kind of like made fun of or like oh you're backpacking like granola eating hippie yeah. you know like go on your little adventure and find yourself or whatever <laughs> but like if if people do travel within America it's kind of interesting because they get like RVs and they like drive to all the big tourist spots they don't just kind of let it be real because if the tourists all they care about is like I want to go here and get my picture taken in front of this they just want to eat the food and see the famous stuff and that's it, you know? Mm. Whereas like actual traveling, like I was saying yesterday, it's like you kind of have to learn how to do that and it takes time and you, you have to risk things, you know? Mm. So everyone that's not from Alabama, they think we're idiots because we talk really slow and because we take our time doing things and, you know, we really love college sports like football and stuff, so they think we're stupid and that we don't know anything else about life. But let me tell you, there are idiots all over this damn country, especially in America. Lots of idiots, in case you haven't realized that yet. And in Alabama, we aren't the stupidest ones in the crock pot. No, we're not. You can cook us on 400, not on 250 like those other slow ones. And you guys don't even know what I'm talking about, but it's okay. <laughs> so, uh, oh, just so you know, camera people, I don't talk that Southern. This is how I usually talk. Okay. They have a lot of common sense and a lot of survival skills. Like, if you put us all out in the woods with some bears, we'd survive. Damn it, those New Yorkers, they wouldn't. We would. We'd survive. And uh, we make really damn good food. We make green bean casseroles, we make squash casseroles, we make breakfast casseroles, there's french toast casserole, there's vegetable casserole, there's zucchini casserole, there's ham and sausages casserole, there's egg casserole, there's blueberry pie, blackberry pie, apple pie, mango pie, apricot pie, you know, sugar pie, caramel pie. He lived up here on top of the mountains. Who was Colmendo? He was the, the main Spaniard that came up here looking for the gold and found. What, what, what was it? Well, well, was it some gold here or nothing? That was a lie. No mines? The gold? Oh, no, yeah, it was. They, they heard there was gold and they came all the way up from well, Mexico. Mexico City. Mexico City. Did an expedition to find the gold, the cities of gold. See, so you know, the Aztecs. The cities were made of mud. It looked like gold from the when the sun would you know shine on oh, it. Okay. Right. But you know the Spaniards were gold happy. You know the, the Aztecs had gold, the Incas had gold, but nobody had come up here. And somebody said, "Oh yeah, there's gold up here," so they come up here. <laughs> and the they way. and they tortured people looking for it. Now he is. Oh. The more you guys will come around, he'll start rattling more. So. Most of the time, the snakes are. I move most of them out here, and they don't normally rattle at me very much. They know you. They know I like them, so...
Yeah. If you see a bear out in the wilderness, you know, don't call him. Uh, don't call him by uh, a bear. Say Anshe. 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 That's a bear. I don't care what kind he is. So he'll, you know, he'll be blessed. Uh, the Kennedy came around. Oh, he was Zuni. Yeah. Bought all that money to. Yeah, but the tribe, you know, the governor took all the money. Didn't even, oh. didn't even help us out. Gosh. That's why he's a rich man, but he's yeah. retired, you know. Still getting some money. Yeah, it's kind of, you know. You can fight it, but can't, can't win no yeah, more. Just more yeah. push you on the side. You know? yeah, just like a dog, you know, feed him. Yeah. <laughs> You're an Indian, you're, you're an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever drink? Yeah, 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 sometimes. But, you know, socially. Yeah. Socially, yeah. yeah, yeah beer, yeah. but not uh, pure pure alcohol uh, in the bottle. Too, no, no. too strong. No, but you don't drink directly at the bottle? Yeah, but you know, uh, I really, you know, I'll take a... Before, you know, I work hard, come in the evening and a couple of shots. And yeah, before eat, or after? Eat, yeah, eat after. After, yeah. Uh, eat real good, yeah. listen to the radio, and go to sleep. to college it was a very liberal school like to the point where there were like no rules anymore and I'm like wait a sec I think we need a little bit so I found myself like becoming more conservative I'm like ah that's awful <laughs> so you have to find something for me anyhow with a little bit of, of balance it's bullshit man it's it's we've been sold a a lie you know of sorts and you know this a lie of the American dream and it's there it is definitely there but it's only accessible by a very small number or a very lucky few, mm -hmm. you know? And and I gotta say, I am very fortunate. Like, I live a very comfortable life. I was able to, I had means to be able to get my education, which now costs, undergrad in the United States now costs $50,000 a, a year. So just to get an just undergraduate degree, in a, to get a bachelor's, which doesn't really get you, it gets you to work at, wait for the train, you know, for a coffee shop or whatever. Um, you got to pay sometimes upwards of two hundred thousand dollars, you know, and then go to professional school. Medical school costs fifty to sixty thousand dollars a year, you know, and so mm -hmm. you're in a lot of debt, in a lot of debt. So if you can make it through all that stuff and you can arrange things, then yeah, there's opportunity for sure. J'étais en short tongue t-shirt dans le désert avec une chaleur de 100 degrés Fahrenheit et là bah, il est 5h30 du mat on est forest quoi je sais pas national forest national <rire> ouais, on est dans ouais. une national forest à côté du Grand Canyon et on se pèle il fait super froid
right now, you think there is one player counting cards in blackjack? Probably not. I believe that there's probably different different um, sections to the surveillance department. Some people are supposed to watch us, they're supposed to watch employees. Others are supposed to watch the slot machines, others watch the table games. The cameras have facial recognition software. Oh, really? So if you are banned from a property and the cameras pick you up, yeah, and security came up to you. You just have to go a beard. Yeah, right, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Voilà la chambre, pas mal, hein Quand même. Mais c'est ça le problème, c'est que tu peux, as toujours une chance de gagner. Au coup d'après, tu peux gagner 40 dollars, quoi. Quoi qu'il arrive. Tu peux avoir perdu 10 fois de suite, tu peux avoir gagné 10 fois de suite le coup d'après. Peut-être que tu gagnes, peut-être que tu perds. Bon, Victor, explique-moi là, il y a quelque chose de spécial là qui est en train de se passer. Euh, bah, disons que la route secoue un petit peu, il y a des dips. avec lui oh, il fait chaud ah, c'est ah, bah, qu -ce que... quoi <rire> Mais... <rire> attends il y a quelqu'un qui a fait un méchoui ou quoi we real archaeologists have brushed oh, <rire> oh mais elles sont pourries notre vidéo <rire> Ouais bon en fait on n'est pas à la plage, on est au musée, c'est juste un jeu pour les... Would you wear the same shirt in Chicago No. <laughs> and what do they say about San Diego in Chicago? I mean, the regular people, oh, um, what do they think about uh, San Diego? They, they think it's weird, they think it's going to fall off the cliff and fall into the ocean. I mean, they, they don't know, you know, and they're sitting there with blizzards and tornadoes. I mean, come on. <laughs> yes. I mean, I, I've seen people in Chicago, I remember, I'd look ahead of me, and the wind was coming from this, whatever direction, and I'd, I'd look at the people and they'd walk beyond the edge of the building and they get hit by the wind and they get knocked down. Knocked down! I mean, it's just like, what? thing is very interesting because Hollywood is an illusion. The whole thing is an illusion. However, there's something wonderful that's happening in Los Angeles because it's connected to Asia, which is the next step. The forward motion seems to be going to the west. I love Europe. I lived there for a long time, but it's kind of done. It's done. It's, you know, we're done. It doesn't matter who the president is. It doesn't matter if it's Sarkozy, does it really? It doesn't matter if it's Bush, does it really? It's gonna be a change, you know. We'll change the president every four years. We'll change the president, we'll change the president. We'll, we'll uh, overthrow this Saddam Hussein guy. That will change everything. 
Obama is just part of this whole thing, which Eisenhower said after World War II, which is beware the military-industrial complex. That particular person who knew everything that was going on, he saw the death and destruction of war, he was then the president, so he got the whole, he got that whole executive part. He got the whole thing. Always look at the money. Where does the money go? Military industrial. Military, that's an interesting concept, isn't it? Well, you know, you could build a bunch of bombs and you can pay a bunch of people to build the bombs. But you know what? If those bombs just sit there, you're not going to be making any money, baby. It's capitalism. It's kind of up to the people to make the difference uh, because there's not going to be any change up there. There's not going to be. Just even forget about it. Because the economy tanked and these young people are going, I'm going to go to university, I'm going to get my business degree, my master's in business, I'm going to get my MBA, I'm getting back, and then I'm going to go out and I'm going to make $300,000 a year and I'm going to be fine and have a family. Guess what? Surprise, you get your degree and you're fucked. Before it was Hollywood land, yeah, and I know. they took the, they took us there. The girl. Merci. Sweet my girl, she. Je m'en fous, moi. Tu t'en fous, ok Ah 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 this this video is to introduce our new new guest. His name is Yuki. He's from Japan. Hi. He's really cool. Thank you, you Yuki, to join us. Thank you too. Yeah, that's cool. I'm really glad to join you. Okay, me too. And uh, Victor, maybe him too. Yeah. Are you are you happy? You no, I'm not happy. Oh. I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
just in Los Angeles, it's, it's much more land widespread that they can expand. The only way San Francisco can expand is now is built up. So you see a lot of growth. Yeah, yeah. They call it the Manhattanization of San Francisco. It, there's two things you don't say. You don't say San Fran and you don't say Frisco. Yeah. We are very special part of it. Yeah. So people, you can say LA. Yeah. That's that for them. You cannot abbreviate our city's name. But when we go outside, we tell people, where do you live? And we say, San Francisco. And people say, oh. <laughs> Ready? I think there is a, no? Yes, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> The purpose of my trip was uh, to talk with a lot of people and then yeah, to, to realize myself, I started this trip. It's, some places are uh, unforgettable places, but uh, yeah. to me, the time with the people is more important. I was surprised about the character of the people in the state. I thought more uh, cold and more, they have more strong racism to the Asian or to the people. The time in the U.S. Uh, is uh, kind of shocking to me because I had uh, uh, a lot of stereotype and uh, Im image about the U.S. because of the media and the uh, yeah, TV show or films, films, yeah. yeah, films also, yeah, and then uh, the rumor also in Japan. If I couldn't speak English well. Uh, or made a mistake in English. What? What are you talking about? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then, oh, you are so idiot, or you are an un idiot person. Uh, I I imagined those situation, but so it's wrong. It's wrong. Huh? <sighs> no one yeah. care about it. Ready, steady, go. <laughs> Oh. Oh. <rire> Victor, en fait, on est où là Là, on est à l'aéroport de San Francisco, oui. entre le, le contrôle de sécurité et la porte d'embarquement. Là, on va directement embarquer. Oh. 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 Oh